Hey guys, hope you are all having a great day. We finally made it to the end of the week after a very volatile trading session. Things shifted a lot last night, after reports started coming in the Russia was targeting a nuclear plant. Fears sparked around the entire globe as the repercussions and effects of a leak could spread radiation throughout the rest of Europe and other areas. All major benchmarks and major caps all plummeted yesterday in the afterhours as this news came out. Later on, it was clarified that Russia was targeting a training site, and stocks bounced up. Today, we had a much stronger report for labor market recovery than initially expected, but the fears and uncertainty given last night's scare left markets and investors in fear, and consequently, we saw further losses. We have a couple important things to go over, so let's Tokyo drift through these so we can finally go into the weekend. Before we start, let me quickly state that I am not a financial advisor, and that all content discussed in this channel is simply information gathered that I deem important for people to know, so that they can make informed decisions. All efforts are aimed to better understand the nature of the current market in anticipation of the greatest squeeze in financial history. Let's dive right in. Let's begin on a positive note. Today we got a fresh set of economic data reaffirming that the US economy has made vast leaps in recovering. This should be very welcoming for monetary policymakers and the Fed in particular. The Labor Department's February jobs report showed greater than expected 678,000 jobs returning last month. Employment growth has accelerated significantly last month to 3.8%. The Fed has already taken this to declare their efforts successful on fulfilling their employment mandate. Remember that Jerome Powell said the most Federal Open Market Committee members would agree that the labor market in the US is now at a level consistent with maximum employment. The next big set of positive news comes from the Batman, which grossed $21.6 million in initial previews Tuesday through Thursday in American and Canadian theaters. This positions this movie to open over $100 million in North American theaters. The movie is set to gross more than all other March films combined for the month. Bringing the topic back to the stock market, the Dow ended the week with a 1.3% loss, marking its fourth day straight in red. The S&P 500 was also down 1.3% over the past five days and Nasdaq dropped almost a full 3%. With oil prices running up and high while fears of an intensifying war in Ukraine, investors have been had a big sell-off session this week. Now, the job report we talked about was incredibly bullish, but it isn't the full story. The broader economy has start to slow this year, or at least that is what the fears and concerns are for economists and analysts. There are now serious fears that the possibility of stagflation will be realized with the combination of slowing growth and rampant inflation. Investors are looking for value and steady investments, which is why bond yields are falling as investors prefer to buy US treasuries. Gold along with other precious metals are up as well while cryptocurrencies are falling. The reality of all this situation, the main takeaway here right now is that now more than ever, the geopolitics have become more important in determining how the economy and stock market will run, more than any job report or any other economic data. This Ukrainian-Russian conflict has replaced the pandemic as the top risk for global supply chains. Remember that Russia is a major producer of commodities, everything from oil and natural gas to palladium and wheat. This crisis is casting doubt on the availability of a sizable chunk of those vital supplies. We need to talk about how Wall Street in particular is handling all these rapid changes in the markets. As countries in the private sector continue to tighten sanctions and exposure to Russia, some players in Wall Street are jumping on the buying opportunity that it's creating. A great article was published by Bloomberg today showed that notorious Goldman Sachs Group and JP Morgan Chase have been buying beaten down company bonds tied to Russia in recent days. Hedge funds that specialize in buying cheap credit are looking to load up on the assets. These institutions are finding ways to wager on distressed securities, but there are serious risks in doing so that could cause certain ramifications for the entire markets down the line. World leaders are looking to punish Russian companies as well as any firms perceived as working with Russians are looking for ways to monetize against the interests of the rest of the world. You see, sanctions' main purpose are to isolate and make their investment instruments untouchable. Now we see Wall Street trying to get in and slime their way back in there. It's important to note that sanctions on Russia haven't totally banned trading in all assets. Goldman Sachs is primarily asking for corporate debt, making bids for Russian sovereign notes. This just underscores and highlights the type of company these institutions are. They are geared towards finding undervalued and mispriced assets, reflecting the view that they don't really care about the consequences this might have towards an asset class nor the nation as a whole. 
representatives for these institutions have all declined to comment on these allegations. Lastly, I want to talk about the billions of dollars in fines that the United States imposes on Wall Street fraud and now nearly half the time, it forgets to collect it. That's right, if you think all those headlines saying this or that institutions were fine an amount for cheating customers out of money, you should not be surprised to know that they nearly half of those fines will not be collected. In over five years that ended back in 2018, the SEC took in 55% of the $20 billion in enforcement fines set through settlements or court judgments. And during the previous five years ending in 2013, the SEC collected only 60%. What we can derive from this data is that the SEC is collecting less and less amount of the fines imposed on criminals over the years. In the fiscal year of 2018, the Commission collected only 28% of almost $4 billion in fines. Looking into this, Wall Street Journal confirmed that over the years, the SEC has struggled to get defendants to pay their fines, with some set to avoid payments forever. This even includes people behind Ponzi schemes who have gone to prison. The SEC's challenge is that it doesn't have the right to seize a debtor's property or assets to extract payment. Instead, it actually relies on time-consuming and litigious process of filing liens against defendants. As of 2019, the SEC has written off more than $10 billion in fines since 2009. This amount includes monetary penalties and disgorgement, which are a type of fine that seeks to recover illegal profits. This isn't even a theory or speculation. Since when asked about this, the SEC confirmed the estimate of the write-offs and even said the steps they take for accounting purposes. They said they have a group of attorneys and paralegals in dedicated offices who work to collect the funds. The fact that they have all these attorneys and they are becoming less and less sufficient over time in collecting the fines is setting up a bad precedent, and it will give Wall Street members plenty of room to push back payments and sometimes, not even pay at all. The SEC has the authority to waive penalties against people who can afford the fine but will sometimes seek money where the prospect of collecting on a judgment is slight. This is a really big issue that needs to be brought up and talked about more often. If criminals are not being enforced to make good on their fines and payments, and this issue is growing to the point that percentage-wise, the SEC has become less able to penalize these criminals, this will over time manifest it in greater crime. Imagine if the stat for collected fines goes below 10% in the next 20 years. That would set off an alert for all institutions that crime will not be punishable, and the odds of success are near 100% even if they get caught. The SEC needs vast restructuring, one that allows them to go after the money and take assets out of criminals if they don't make good on their payments. The SEC could certainly use more funds to grow the agency because honestly, it feels like it's at its bare bones of its full potential. Let's now talk about today. The Fed submitted over $1.483 trillion in reverse repo operations today. Dark pool trades for AMC accounted for 47% of the total volume today, while dark pool trades for GameStop accounted for 41% of the total volume today. AMC had a larger amount of buy orders than sell orders, with GameStop also having a larger amount of buy orders than sell orders. Now, let's talk about performance. AMC had a bearish performance today, losing over 8% for the day. It began trading pretty bearishly, as the news of Ukraine worsened and made investors wary. In the pre-market it managed to maintain itself above the VWAP, and upon market opening, it bounced above 18.20 for a moment before being dragged down to the lower band of VWAP, where the price was crushed below 16.60 before it saw any respite. It bounced form there near the VWAP, but was rejected three times, SOI it eventually retested 16.60 as support and fell under it, reaching 16.35 as the lowest price for the day. AMC closed at 16.57, below the VWAP. AMC has been hammered down really bad, especially today with the rest of the market. Do not let this performance make you think that the stock won't be coming back. With glowing earnings report this Monday and bright future ahead, AMC is bound for great things, so don't sleep on it. As for what to expect next week, I will make a video on Sunday as usual talking about where I believe we are headed to. GameStop had a bearish performance, losing over 5% for the day. GME opened to S brief run above 120 before it was crushed back down below 114. After that dip, it began moving up, eventually breaking past the VWAP and above 117. It was unable to hold support at these levels unfortunately, so the stock began falling back down, this time breaking below the lower band of VWAP and reaching 110.58 as the lowest price of the day. 
GameStop closed at 111.66, below the VWAP. I look forward with great anticipation for the earnings report of this company, I cannot wait to see how it performed in the fourth quarter. As to what to expect next week, like I said, I will make a video talking about it on Sunday. Thank you for making it to the end of the video, that is all I have for you guys today. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And most importantly, remember to come join my Discord. If you want to support this channel, I have a Patreon link in the description as well as some one-time donation links for Cash App and PayPal. Thank you again for being a part of this channel. I will continue striving for better content. Enjoy the rest of your day, keep on buying the dip and to the moon.